Welcome to Miami Matters with Dr. Michelle. There's a lot of talk about the stress Olympias face as part of the job. Olympic gold medalist Tatiana Gutsu is here to share her firsthand experience. We're going to take a quick break, share your thoughts on Facebook and Instagram at Miami Matters with Dr. Michelle. Welcome back to Miami Matters with Dr. Michelle and welcome Tatiana. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure having you here today. Well, Tatiana, tell me a little bit about your background and what we have here on the table. I am a multiple national champion uh, in Ukraine and USSR. I am uh, three times in 1990, 1991, and 1992 a European gold medalist. I have uh, 12 gold medals, one bronze and one silver. I competed in world championship in 1991 in um, Indianapolis, United States, and I competed in Olympic Games in 1992, Barcelona. I held two gold medals, one silver and one bronze. Wow, and so it's safe to say you're a pro, right? <laughs> <I> yes, <am. laughs> you are. Yes. And so um, the medals that you just mentioned, these are three of them on the table, right? This and is from Olympic Games, yes. This is my treasure. <laughs> yes, that, that, that is awesome, and what a treasure. You know, I just want to wear all three. <laughs> um, so. I know you, I mean, to, to even be involved in the Olympics, you have to have a passion for it, right? There's a lot of like really, really overwhelming training, maybe lack of sleep, I would imagine. This, uh. It's not lack of sleep. I think if you are, um, my decision when I started gymnastics, I actually saw Olympic Games in 1980 and my father actually went to the Moscow and he just brought me a mascot. And from that mascot, it just something clicked in me that I wanted to do artistic gymnastics, actually artistic gymnastics I saw on the television and um, I told my parents that I wanted to be there. And they said, okay, child, just come down, we'll figure out something for you. And then two years later, when I turned six years old, I was chosen from daycare uh, to do the trial class and with that trial class um, my coaches actually who raised me uh, for 10 years from the very head start uh, they had to do um, uh, physical ability uh, strength speed flexibility the awareness in the air the awareness of the body the awareness on the trampoline um, how I feel, whether I feel comfort uh, comfortable or confident and not. Um, and with that, I think uh, when we finished on the trampoline part, I already knew that this is my passion and this is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like it's something you were born to do. And that actually, I often wonder, are people born with such athletic ability or can you be trained to do it? I think it's, um, it's a combination. Uh, it's the wanna to do it, and then everything else is the coach is guiding you through. And and so it's it's a combination of both. And I always I often think that you know what biology has a lot to do with it. Uh, that is too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's um, it's multiple factors. Um, but I think. Um, it starts with the first when the child steps in, you know, and the interest, the hunger is actually growing. And uh, with every other tools that being provided to us as athletes, I'm gonna speak uh, exactly uh, for my profession, which is artistic gymnastics. I honestly think that we are superhumans because we're not just, um, you know, doing a stroke for a swim or doing a stroke hit uh, with the tennis ball. And I do have respect for all of the sports. Mm -hmm. It's just um, artistic gymnastics um, requires height, speed, flexibility, strength, and so on, the awareness in the air, how high you go. And uh, what you're supposed to do in the air, is it a double or is it a double uh, layout or it's a, it's a double pike or a double tuck or a double twist or one twist or full or half and so on and so on. So with that, uh, the years that we're putting in actually in, in time 
you master the skills. So with that, um, you're learning how to be um, how to be super. And so it sounds like there's um, there's like you know you really need to be able to focus, and you need to be. It's almost like when you meditate and you try to block other things out your mind. So if you're sitting there meditating and you're not thinking about what do I have to do later, um, what do I have to do like in the in the next two minutes, you're only focused on what you need to do right now to stay in the game. We train to be focused. Um, there's no other things because we train to be focused. We train to not to give up. Uh, we train that um, if, let's say, if uh, an athlete perform in vault and uh, she forgot on which foot she's supposed to start. So on the springboard, she's jumping with the wrong foot. We, we train in them to actually still perform her skill. Hmm, that's interesting. We're going to talk Absolutely. more about that yes. <laughs> after this quick break. Head over to at Maya Metis for Dr. Michelle. See you in a minute. Welcome back to Maya Metis for Dr. Michelle. So, Tatiana, as we talk about this, it sounds like focus. We know that focus is important, but we also know that distractions are also inevitable and in, in just in, in life. And so it's like sometimes in order to focus, you have to train your brain or trick your brain into just focusing on this right here for this period of time and I can get through it. So in order to connect to what it is that you're doing, because it could be very difficult to, if someone, sometimes the more somebody says pay attention or don't forget to pay attention, the more you forget <laughs> to pay attention. And so that can be a hard thing. So how do you get your girls to focus and when you're finding that they're distracted? Um, I try to take their attention uh, right away to something else. So I think that's very important because um, that particular part can lead to the injuries. Because when the girls cannot focus on that particular thing, what I was explaining or for that assignment, I have to, um, I have to find the strategy and to remove them from that particular part or from that particular assignment so the mind can't be switched onto something else. So that is okay to do. Um, that's actually the tactics that my coach taught me uh, because the skills, to master the skills, it requires time and quantity of. It's not the uh, perfection that you work in right away, it's the quantity on how many times you did that skill. Uh, perhaps uh, when I competed in the Olympics, one particular skill that I was working, I worked on that skill eight years. Eight years before I could perform that skill and I was still afraid. So like one skill from multiple skills that I competed, competed that one skill took me eight years to, to work on it and to perform. Eight years. And so in that eight years, did you ever think that, okay, I'm just not going to be able to master this? I wasn't thinking about mastering the skills because the, um, what, what it's interfering in mind is fear. So uh, fear is invisible but uh, because we feel that we are unsafe, so that where the, mm, you know, the blockage, uh, or sometimes when kids are doing skill and then they just stop. So that fears interfere into the gut and adrenaline and, and, and the focus, something is in distress. So something is interfering for them not to perform. So I did face that, yes, I did experience all of it. Uh, if you ask me if I I was not afraid to perform. Oh my gosh, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, if probably if I would go back to my country and stand on that same balance beam, uh, those sweat spots are still there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, but now I understand. Now I understand the quality and the tools what my coach gave me, and those qualities and the tools I can transfer to my athletes now. And and so when you hear someone like Simone Biles say, "I need a break," what do you think of, of that? I stand one hundred percent with her on that because she felt that she was in danger. 
and um, besides her nobody can feel because nobody is in her body and in her mind uh, because um, I think it's very important that she heard herself and she heard it's like almost like she felt that it would not be safe for her to compete. Um, I know that it's a lot of pressure on her from everyone, uh, comments and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being rude and being nasty uh, to what they're complaining, but she understood that safety for her was much more important than that medal. And with that, I will support her 100%. Mm -hmm. And it is so important for people to know when a break is needed. And so in, in, in like you're working with athletes right now, and how do you, do you find times when you just know that someone needs to take a break? Yes, uh, I've been working 27 years with kids. So uh, in the child's body, which is body language, I read very fast. Mm -hmm. And what, what types of things do you look for when you're, when you're talking about in terms of the body language? Um, I think it's um, uh, the body language and they're trying to be invisible in the crowd, that's a uh, first sign. So, mm -hmm. which means um, they're probably afraid to do a turn or they afraid to uh, do the skill. And with that, they're standing in the crowd. And that's the first sign that I notice and they're trying to be invisible. So with that, um, I'd rather keep, her, uh, keep the athlete safe and I would rather uh, go and so she can work on something else, which is that's what I do because I am putting um, her in danger and which is I don't want to do that because my job is to pr provide safety first. Yeah. Safety and fun because through fun mm -hmm. you can learn much more and you can be much more successful than through suffering and tears. I just don't believe into that. Do you think that, um, did you ever find that during your time of training, did you have somebody who understood that hey, she needs a break, I, I see your body language and this is a sign that Tatiana needs to, to rest now or rest for two days or two weeks. <laughs> I am not sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am not sure because I was so in love with the sport that I didn't want to break uh, because even when I was going from the practice to home and destination from the bus stop to my household is 20 minutes, I would leap or I will do the cartwheels or I will do the turns or dance, whatever we learn. So, no, I don't know. <laughs> well, Tatiana, <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break. Head over to Facebook and Instagram. Share your thoughts. See you in a minute. Welcome back to My Matters with Dr. Michelle. So Tatiana, you were talking about that, um, you know, sometimes the kids don't want to take a break because there's a sign of, it may be perceived as a sign of weakness or, I don't know, I'm being pushed to the side, I'm being benched or something. And, but you know, as the expert, you know when that, when it's necessary. Uh, when it's necessary, only when it's necessary, yes. To put somebody intentionally out, I would never do that because um, it could damage the self-esteem of a child and we're not here to damage, we're actually here to embrace. Um, because right now self-esteem in the 21st century in the kids, it's very fragile. Mm -hmm. So my job is actually to embrace the self-esteem and to make them stronger and to make them feel confident and to build that confidence because um, whoever is stepping through, um, you know, through the doors of my academy, my job is very important because at the end of the day when the child is coming out with a smile, it makes me feel good that I succeeded and I made something good 
uh, for that little person. Mm -hmm. And that's so important that you, you understand that because I'm finding that kids are more anxious than ever. And they're showing that anxiety more than ever too. And so when you have somebody, a child who is in any type of sport, there's a lot of pressure. And so it's good that they have a coach like you. They have someone who's saying, hey, let's, let's address this because I, I get it. And it, that's, that's so important. It's one thing to be able to train somebody for greatness, but it's another thing to recognize their emotional state. So. I, I think it's very important because we're not just building athletes. We're not just training athletes. Uh, we're building humans, and mm -hmm. those humans are right now very young. And uh, the future for them is much more important than I think medals. Yes, of course, I will uh, give my knowledge that I know of the professional sport that my coach taught me. But I think first it's the confidence and self-esteem because they need to feel good about themselves and they need to be feeling great about the sport that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the child that steps into gymnastics place, maybe they're going to start with gymnastics because gymnastics is going to give them you know, the, the mobility, the just the awareness, the awareness of the body, the awareness of the mind, uh, the awareness of the muscles or to build the muscles, you know, just just those those um, basic tools that it can carry on into a different sport. Mm -hmm. And if that's so, that's even great because I did a little part of mine and I share and give that child to something, you know, that they can carry on into some in into the other sport or transfer that into the other sport. Mm -hmm. I always say, have you ever heard of muscle memory? Yes. I always wonder, um, some people don't believe in it, some do. I mean, I think it's a real thing. What do you think as a gymnast? Muscle memory is very important in artistic gymnastics, very important. Like I said, um, you know, I never thought of that, but um, we are superhumans. Who is doing artistic gymnastics, we are superhumans. Yes, 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 you are. And you, you said that you train your entire life for five minutes of perfection. <laughs> That's Ten major. Years. That's powerful. Yes. Ten years. Uh, Ten years. Ten years of five minutes of perfection. Wow. And so that that five minutes, that's a very powerful five minutes, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's your whole life. So um, you had this academy. We've been talking about the kids and all the wonderful things you're doing with them. How does someone get involved with your academy? Uh, we are available everywhere, and actually, if somebody's looking for them to start gymnastics, they can find us on www.tatianagutsugymnasticsacademy.com. Uh, we actually, not too long ago, we opened adult classes, so you're oh. more than welcome to Maybe come I and try the adult <laughs> class. Uh, as well as we have uh, something for the boys, it's a boys club class. And um, yes, absolutely. We as well doing tumbling uh, for the dance studios and we're doing tumbling for cheerleading. Companies. What's the youngest age? My youngest uh, that comes to the academy is two years old. Two? two wow. Years old, yes. So what do you do with a two-year-old? We train. <laughs> <laughs> really? We, um, it's it's the awareness. Uh, so it's not just uh, it's not just that we're showing something for the kids. Mm -hmm. So the the two year old is actually coming with the parents, and uh, my job is actually to uh, show the parents the guidance of things, um, simplicity of you know they can climb the kids can climb up, they have absolutely no fear, but they don't know how to climb down. So that's where I step in. And I am teaching um, not just kids but parents as well to show them and give them the tools, proper tools, so they're always aware on where to spot or, where to, or when to step back. Wow, I have a two-year-old nephew, and I'm just imagining him jumping all over the place <laughs> now. No fear. <laughs> I mean, you, he'll look around to make sure, you know, there is, he has a sense of safety, but I'm just imagining him in your class. <laughs> and, and anytime. I mean, you can stop by anytime. Yeah, I will have to check yes. that out. Well, thank you, Tatiana. I thank really you appreciate so you coming in, and I've learned so much, and, you know, I would love to have you back again. You'll be our I'm looking pro. forward to yeah. Thank um, you so much. Yes, yes, and thank you. And, you know, your your medals are probably, you know, making everybody 
envious <laughs> of you here. Um, so, you know, thanks again. And we're going to take a quick break. Share your thoughts on Facebook and Instagram at My Matters with Dr. Michelle. See you in a minute. <laughs> Thank you for watching today. Remember, self-care means taking a break even from the things we love. Head over to at Mimers with Dr. Michelle, share your thoughts about today's episode and more. Improve your mental health, improve your life. See you next week.